I've always been most fascinated by designs that capture motion using fluid lines. Whether you're using a minimal wire palette that doesn't incorporate as many coils and weaves, or if you're using a bunch of different textures to create your piece, one of the things that helps make that fluidity come together is a complete lack of straight lines. In this video, I wanna walk you through the process that I use for creating accent settings that enhance that fluid shape for your pieces. Before we dive into today's video, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Hey everyone, I'm Nolan McClelland. I'm the artist behind Raft Art Jewelry, and of course, all of the videos you see here on my YouTube channel. Before we dive into today's project, I wanted to take a minute to talk about a tool that I use every day in my studio and the sponsor for today's video. If you've seen any of my work outside of wire wrapping, it will probably come as no surprise that I've always found inspiration in fantasy literature. I use Audible every day in my studio. It gives me the opportunity to explore the worlds of J.R.R. Tolkien, Robert Jordan, Brandon Sanderson, and many others while I'm creating. Right now, I'm rereading Joe Abercrombie's First Law series. The narrator, Stephen Pacey, does a fantastic job bringing the characters to life in a way so different from how I imagined while reading that it's like I get to experience the story for the first time all over again. Audible has thousands of titles, so even if fantasy isn't your area of interest, there is certainly a title for you. They have podcasts, theatrical performances, stand-up comedy, and audiobooks in every genre under the sun. You can try Audible for free right now for 30 days at audibletrial.com slash raftark. In the interest of full disclosure, Audible does give me a financial kickback for every free trial signed up for using this link. As of recording this, I've personally logged 5 months, 9 days, 22 hours, and 12 minutes of listening time on Audible in the years I've been using it. I can say without reservation, this is a tool I absolutely love for keeping my creativity inspired. You can help support the channel for free by starting an Audible membership using the link on the screen or in the description of this video. So a special thank you goes out to Audible for sponsoring this video. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this project. Before we dive into the wire for today's project, let's take a moment to plot it out on paper. If we're looking top down at our setting, we'll have two straight lines. that make up each of our side wires. In the center, we'll have two pieces of half round that will make up the wires that will be setting our stones into place. In order to create the curve in our weave, we're gonna add additional coils to one side versus the other side. In this case, we'll do two coils around the left for every one coil around the right. Each of these lines represents a coil, and then one over here, and then crossing back. When we condense this weave after we've done enough rotations through our pattern, there'll be less surface area covered by our coils on the right side so the weave will naturally begin to arch off towards the right. If we take a moment to look down the barrel of our weave, this is the way that our pattern will be set up. If we start on the left, we'll be coming out over the top of our leftmost wire and underneath our rightmost wire. We'll coil once all the way around before crossing back underneath the leftmost wire for two coils around. If we start with our wire underneath our setting, every time that we pass through our pattern, it should come back 
to the same position each starting point. Now when we get to the point where it's time to secure our stones, our pattern does adjust slightly. We'll now have three wires that we need to incorporate into this pattern. For this pattern, if I start again underneath our leftmost wire, we're going to go over the top of that wire, but underneath both of our two middle half rounds. We'll then cross under, under those and over the top of the leftmost, where we can coil all the way around, and then go over the top of both of our half rounds and back underneath one full coil around and back to our starting position. When it comes to this stage in the setting, I often opt not to add an additional coil on the outside edge of my setting. I find that the additional coil, if I add it, just makes the setting a little bit too complicated and I want to keep this specific part as simple as possible so I can be ready to go ahead and begin setting our second stone. With all of this theory on paper, let's go ahead, grab some wires, and begin putting it all together. The wires that I'll be using to create this setting are two segments of 16 gauge half round and two segments of 18 gauge half round. For the weaving wire, I have four feet of 28 gauge round. Depending on the length that you'll need for your piece, you may need more wire than I'm using here. Each of my segments is four inches long. The stones that I'll be setting in this video are four millimeter amethysts. I'm gonna start with one of my 16 gauge half rounds and secure our wire to the base of it. I like to work from left to right because I'm right-handed. So I have my 28 gauge round coming from the bottom and out to the left side over the top, the same way that we drew our diagram. Next, we need to add both of our 18 gauge half rounds. These two half rounds will sit one on top of the other with the flat sides facing towards the back. Our 28 gauge is underneath both 18 gauges, but it will sit on top of our last 16 gauge. From here, I'm gonna spiral once around our 16 gauge, and then cross back to our starting wire going over the top of both of our 18 gauges. But underneath our leftmost 16 gauge. We can coil once and then begin creating our setting. Our first step is gonna to be to take both of our 18 gauge half rounds and bend them vertically away from the surface of our weave to give us the space we need to work underneath. Next, we're gonna start our two-part figure eight weave between just the two 16 gauge wires. We're gonna come over the top of our leftmost 16 gauge twice. With those two coils in place, we're gonna cross between the two wires so that we are now underneath our rightmost 16 and coil one full time around before crossing back to our starting position. I have my two coils around and we can cross back underneath for our single coil around the rightmost. I went ahead and repeated our same pattern a total of six times. I count each return to our starting wire as a set in the pattern, 
So one, two, three, and so on and so on. With our six crosses through the pattern complete, we're ready to return to our next section of the setting. We're going to take both of our 18 gauges and bend them back parallel to the surface of our weave. I'm going to bend them both out to either direction so that they sit at a 90 degree angle to each other. For me, the one branching off towards the right is sitting on top of the one towards the left. I'm going to start with whichever wire is on top, pinching at the base where they connect to the weave, and bring it back across the opposite side of our weave. Once these two wires are parallel, I'm going to take my other wire and bend it across so it's sitting in the position the other one sat in previously. Taking note of the angle at which that they sit to each other helps me ensure that I have an even weave throughout the whole pattern. At this point, we're going to return to our three-part weave between the two 16 gauges and our two 18 gauges. We're going to weave just over where the 18 gauges cross at the center of our section. We're going to bring it over the top of our leftmost 16 gauge and underneath both 18 gauges. It's going to go over the top of our rightmost 16 gauge, spiral once around, and then cross over the top of both 18 gauges and underneath our leftmost 16 gauge. From here I can coil once to complete that section of our weave and secure our two wires into place. Next we need to create some space in order to secure our stone. So we're going to bend both 18 gauge wires back to parallel to each other. I'm then going to bring them both straight through the bottom of our weave. It'll cause both wires to arch slightly so I can slide a tool and begin to create more space. I love to use these little sunglass repair screwdrivers. They're perfect for being able to just slide right underneath my 18 gauges and begin creating the space that I need to secure my stone. With our pocket of space opened, we're going to slide our stone into place with the pointy side of the stone, the culet, pointing into the center of our weave. I can then use my thumb to pinch my 18 gauges back through. I'm going to bring them both back to the surface of my weave and pull them at that 90 degree angle out to either side. Now that we have our first stone secured, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process for our next two stones. I repeated the exact same process for our next two stones, and now we're ready to add the curve to our setting. Before we do, I want to make sure that my entire weave is compressed so that along my left side, the side that has the two coils around, each section of 28 gauge is compressed on top of each other. If we look at the right side, there's going to be some gaps in between, and that's the space that we need to fill. To fill this space, I'm going to grasp firmly from both ends of our weave and bend towards our right side. Once the gaps on our right side 16 gauge begin to fill, we'll have a nice uniformly curved weave setting. To show an example for how I use this exact same size setting 
in one of our pieces that we worked on together in Patreon. I set more of those 4mm amethysts at the bottom of this negative space pendant. If you'd like to see more projects like this from start to finish, check out the link below for my Patreon. I hope these curved settings help inspire you to utilize a little bit more fluid motion in your pieces. A special thank you goes out to all of the names on the screen for supporting this channel through Patreon. What I am doing would not be possible without your support. If you're interested in helping support the channel, follow the link in the description below this video. If you found this video helpful, leave me a like on the video. This helps me a lot with the visibility of my videos and YouTube's algorithms. To be the first to know when I upload new content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thank you for watching and happy wrapping.